Christmas have become annual events in Havana to mark the Chinese Lunar New Year. Cuba once had the largest Chinese population in the Americas, outside of San Francisco. Very few remain today, but Chinese culture still exerts a strong and visible influence on the island nation. Michael Voss has our story. Early every morning in parks all over Havana, Cubans gather to practice the Chinese so-called soft martial art, Tai Chi. Many doctors here recommend it to their elderly patients. Various forms of traditional Chinese medicine, including acupuncture, are also widely available from the Cuban National Health Service. Another popular pastime is wushu, or kung fu. Cuba's links to China go back to the middle of the 19th century, when the first boatload of immigrants landed here in 1847. Historian Teresa Maria Li is a director of the Chinese Cultural Center in Havana. This was a time when the battle was on to end the slave trade, and the option was to bring in Chinese peasants. They arrived in massive numbers and were assigned to work in the sugar plantations as well as the tobacco and coffee fields. Around 130,000 Chinese were shipped here to work as indentured labor in the fields, and they were often treated as badly as slaves. There are still Chinatowns in Havana and several other cities, and some of their clubs and societies have managed to survive, but these were mainly developed by later immigrants who arrived in the 20th century. Very few ethnic Chinese Cubans remain. Almost all of the original laborers shipped here during the 19th century were single men who ended up marrying former slaves. Today, their presence can be seen in the thousands of Cubans who have Afro-Chinese ancestry. In recent years, the two countries have developed strong political and economic links. China is Cuba's second largest trading partner after Venezuela. But it's a history which goes well beyond commercial and ideological ties. Michael Voss, CCTV, Havana.